Hey, welcome listeners once again to another Radio Grenadine show. I'm here today with Mr. Donald D. Riggs, uh, and we're going to talk about ham radio communications and also we'll touch a bit on disaster, natural disaster preparedness. So, Don, good morning to you. Aris Stanton, thanks for having me on your program. Okay, um, first I want to touch a bit on on who who is Donald D. Riggs. Um, mm-hmm. You obviously have a wealth of information. You've been around in the broadcast field, now in the ham radio field for quite some time. So who who is Donald D. Riggs? Okay, for those persons who may not know me, um, I'm really a teacher by profession, but I also did broadcasting, working with the Government Information Service, now API, for 19 years, both in the area of radio and uh, television. Uh, well, I'm like semi-retired now, semi-retired. I just turned 60 this year, so I pulled back on the throttle a little bit and making way for younger guys like you to, you know, take control. But um, <coughs> To speak a little bit about myself, um, I, I love soccer, I used to be a referee, but uh, my passion is for radio, and I have been in radio ever since I was a teenager, started off as CB radio, and then I upgraded to ham radio, or amateur radio, as it is known worldwide, and I have never regretted, never, never, never regretted getting into this very interesting hobby and uh, service. Okay, Donald, that's quite quite a bit of experience and, and um, the experience in different areas as well. We're going to touch a bit about um, on, on radio, Rainbow Radio League. Um, you're the president and the founding director of the Rainbow Radio League based in St. Vincent. Um, what or, or could you explain the, the functions of the Rainbow Radio League and how it was formed? Out of what it was formed initially? Okay, good. Um, <coughs> the Rainbow Radio League was formed uh, 17 years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. We now into our 18th year, and the next year, January the 22nd, uh, we will be celebrating our 18th year. Uh, the Rainbow Radio League is a non profit community service organization, and we have been providing uh, communication services for St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the wider area as I said before, for the last 17 years. Um, we work along very closely with the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, and we are an active member of the Telecommunications Subcommittee of NEMO. Um, we realize that um, we are a multi-island state and uh, we cannot really uh, rely on radio operators in St. Vincent to do work in the Grenadine, so therefore, um, we came to the de- made the decision that we have to reach out to all the Grenadine Islands because everywhere you have people, um, <coughs> people are important, lives are important. We are, in the, we are in the business of saving, helping to save lives, right, through communication, right, and we found that the best thing to do is to have the people on the ground in Union Island, in Miro, in Canawan, in Beckway, wherever we have people living in, in, in Palm Island, Pity St. Vincent, Mustique. We need to get people, we need to have people on the ground who are trained as radio operators so that if there is an emergency there, being on the ground, they can respond in quick time because proximity, because they are on the ground, they are in the same location, they will be able to respond quickly and they will be able to relay this information to people further afield, whether it is Grenada, Barbados, or even in St. Vincent, so that if we are to respond, we will be able to respond in a proper way, knowing what the needs are in that particular of that particular disaster. Okay, so Donna, uh, we we hear the term, we often hear the term ham ham radio a lot. Um, for the listeners, um, for persons who may might not have any knowledge whatsoever of what a ham radio is about, um, or the whole organization of of ham radio operators, could you quickly break down um, what the whole ham Ham technology is about? No, ham radio is really about communicating. That is the common denominator, if you want to call it. All ham radio operators communicate. It's either by voice 
or by packet or, the, or, or, or by digital means, but the main thing is communicating, whether it's going by text, whether it's going to be by, as I said, by packet, right, or by voice, it's mainly done by voice, right, and um, that is what is important, to be able to communicate, because, come on, <laughs> For if I am hungry, if I don't tell, and I'm at the restaurant and I don't tell the, um, don't tell the, the, the bartender, sorry, uh, or, or the waitress what I need, I might be there just waiting. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. communication is very important, right? I just use that analogy to show that if you need something, then you need to communicate. You might see a girl, you like her, uh, staying, staying by yourself ain't gonna solve the problem. You have to go across and say, hey, you know, hi miss, you know, you're very attractive, whatever the case is. Yeah, yeah, you start true. communicating, yes, and yes. out of communication, good things do happen. Okay, so for bare bones, um, let's say tomorrow I want to become a uh, ham radio operator. How? Where do I start? How do I get into it? And bare bones, what, what's the minimum um, requirements I need in terms of radio training? Okay, the training is very important, but you also need the equipment, right? Um, the training, you need to know where you could transmit, where you can transmit, because there's something called a radio frequency spectrum. And there are several users of the radio frequency spectrum. Commercial radios use a part, police use a part, um, the, the maritime people use a part, the military people use a part of the spectrum, the aeronautical, the people in the airplanes, they have to communicate with each other too. The airplane just, just, just can't come and land just like that. They have to speak to the control tower, and the control tower has to give them clearance to make sure that they don't have any accidents. So the radio frequency spectrum is a very wide, but radio amateurs have a particular segment. They have several segments, and to become a radio amateur, a licensed radio amateur, that is, you need to know where you could transmit and where you can't transmit, because as a radio amateur, you can't go and transmit on the police frequencies or allocated to police, or you can't go and transmit on the frequencies allocated to the airport. So therefore, knowing where you could transmit and where you can't transmit is very important. Then you also need to know um, certain terms like the phonetic alphabet, which you need to know, which helps you to clarify certain words under noisy band conditions. And you also need to know a little bit about what is called radio etiquette, the do's and the don'ts. Just like when you're learning to drive, you need to know the road signs and how to interpret these road signs, some of the hand signs, signals, and so on. So just the same way in amateur radio, or ham radio is also referred to, you need to know what you could do, what you can't do, your limitations, what power levels you are, um, uh, are allowed. And you also need to know how to make your own antenna, which is very, very, very important because any radio station, any transmitting equipment must have an antenna. And knowing what antenna and the size of antenna is very important. So in the training, you will get all of that information, how to make your antennas. You need to know how to as I said before, the phonetic alphabet. These are some of the basic things as you're talking about the bare bones, and you also need to know where you could transmit and where you can't transmit. Okay, well said, Don. Um, on the topic of training, you recently conducted a, a well-detailed training right here in Union Island just a few months ago. Um, there were several participants across all fields, all, um, all career fields. Could you explain a bit... Um, just to go back on, on that, that training course, uh, what sparked it, and your, your outlook on it, um, how, this, how the students are performing right now? Well, <clears throat> earlier this year, in February to be exact, and we're talking about 2012, we conducted the first part of the training course, which is mainly the theoretical part. Uh, as part of the training, we also have... Um, a practical aspect which was conducted re very recently here in Union Island and we looked at a, a tsunami scenario. Um, I'm very happy to say that for the theoretical part, all participants, I think it was 12 in all, all participants were successful and we have now 12 persons in Union Island who are legally entitled to use the radio frequency spectrum allocated to radio amateurs. Okay, Don, that's, a, that's, a, that's quite an achievement there, um, to have 12 persons join the ham radio 
Definitely. community yes. and um, being licensed to, to broadcast. Not broadcast, to transmit. To transmit, <laughs> to transmit using the ham radio frequencies. So what's what's next for ham radio in general? What what do you see the future? We know that ham radio um, comes in in times of natural disasters um, all, in, over the all over the world um, and regular communications, meet new people. What do you think the future holds for the ham radio community in general, and more so for St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Well, there's only one good problem that affects most radio amateurs, is the acquisition of equipment. Because ham radio equipment is pretty expensive. I mean, it's getting cheaper all the time, but that is also one of the limitations. We have several types of radios. We have radios that could, could communicate very well over short distances. But then again, you, have, uh, you also have equipment that could communicate across borders. Uh, you know, <coughs> you could even communicate with the International Space Station, which is orbiting the Earth all the time. So you need specialized equipment for that. That is the only limitation uh, for acquisition of equipment. But I think the interest is there among the folks in Union Island. We, as I said, we recently conducted a field exercise and the enthusiasm is there. <coughs> um, radio operators are willing. And as you quite correctly said, in times of natural disasters, when the telephone service, the cell phone service is, is out of order, is, is down, ham radio always saves the day. After Hurricane Katrina in the United States, recently with Hurricane Sandy, with the massive earthquake and resultant um, tsunami in Southeast Asia some years ago, amateur radio, a ham radio, always saves the day. As a matter of fact, it is free. Right? Once you get your license, you can talk to a man in Russia, you can talk to a person in Australia, in South Africa, in Namibia, wherever. Once you have propagation, you can talk to these persons freely for hours and end if you if you have the <laughs> if you have the energy to speak yeah. so long. Uh, so that is one of the advantages of ham radio. It is free to communicate with anybody virtually any part of the world. Okay, Donald D. Riggs. I, I wanna say a special thank you on behalf of Radio Grenadines for sparing some time with us to have this one on one interview and I'm sure persons who are listening are now more of a with the operations of ham radio and also its usefulness to society. Okay, then, Santan, thanks for having me um, on your radio station, on your program, and I do hope that um, your listeners would send in emails and so on uh, to find out more about it. And once we have a group of willing persons who want to become radio amateurs, we'll probably come back in Union and conduct another training course. Okay, for persons who may, may be interested in contacting you, could you leave a, an email address where they could send an email email to you? Yeah, you can get me at dadirigs at gmail.com or you could send it to the Rainbow Radio League address, which is rainbow underscore radio underscore league at yahoo.com. I repeat that again, rainbow underscore radio, L-E-A-G-U-E, -E, at yahoo.com. All right, folks, there you have it, a one-on-one -on -one interview with Donald D. Riggs, and we're here a nice breezy morning, Sunday morning, in the Clifton Square area at Nola's uh, Restaurant. We just had a wonderful breakfast, roast breadfruit and saltfish with some orange juice and uh, bush tea. Yes, yeah, so I hope that interview was uh, quite interesting for you. hope you learned something. So... Once again, this is Stanton Gomes uh, broadcasting for RadioGrenadines.com.